Hello and welcome. My name is Sulia Richardson and I am the Financial Wellness Senior Educator at Desert Financial Credit Union. And today we're going to be talking about organizing your financial records. So let me go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the presentation and we shall get started. So as I said, we are talking about organizing your financial records. And today we're gonna to be learning about, you know, how to set up a home filing system. We're going to share tips and ideas to help you to figure out a system that works for you, how to um, declutter and still find what you're looking for. It can be really, really stressful trying to set up a filing system. And so some of the benefits in doing this is that, of course, you become clutter-free. <laughs> you can find key documents in a hurry, um, reduce and potentially eliminate late fees, get rid of tax time stress, have more time, more energy, more space, and have peace of mind. Have you ever paid a late fee because you forgot that a payment was due? I have. Have you ever um, spent like a lot of time looking for a key important document that you needed in a hurry? Um, I have. And that's because I wasn't organized. And so, you know, our hope is that by the end of this presentation, you're going to have a system in place that will help you never pay a late fee again because you forgot a payment or um, not being able to locate a, late, uh, a key piece of document. You can easily go and find that document quickly without spending a lot of time. So even with the best intention, some of our record keeping system, it failed. And it happened for a few different reasons. One, our system might be too complicated, <laughs> too complicated. And so when it's very complicated, sometimes we fizzle out, like we have good intentions, but we, if we overcomplicate our process, we fizzle out and we don't follow through. The second reason is that maybe, is not comprehensive enough. Maybe we have, you know, a big pile of things that every time something comes in that we have to deal with and we kind of don't want to do it right away, we put it to the pile. And before we know it, we've got this huge stack of papers and documents that we have to deal with. And then maybe the third reason is that we're not consistent. We're not consistent in how we handle our finances, our bills when they come in. There's no system in place. Is there one place in your home where you collect all your documents until you can deal with it? Or, you know, are things spread out throughout the house and, you know, something's in the bedroom, something's in the garage or something on a kitchen counter in a work bag? We're not consistent. So getting some kind of process in place. So as you, you know, are beginning to do this, you're going to have to excuse me, do a sweep through your house and collect all of your documents. So the first step in creating your filing system is that you're gonna gather all of your documents into one place, all of your documents into one place. So there are some obvious places where we know things um, accumulate, papers accumulate, but then there's the uh, not so obvious, like maybe um, desk drawers, maybe a work bag, maybe a kitchen counter, maybe a nightstand. So find all of those documents, gather them in the same place so that you can sort through them. And so the second step is you're going to put those papers into categories. You're gonna have an action category, an archive category. You're gonna have a household category. You're going to have a recycle category and then also a shred category. So in this action category, this is going to be documents and papers that you need to take action on and then you're going to throw it away. You're going to discard it. So this could be documents like invitations, uh, maybe appointment reminders, ATM receipts, the ATM receipts, they don't have any personal information. So once you verify that with your online banking, you can discard that. The second is the archive category. And these are documents that you kind of need to hang on to. I um, mean, you have to file them, but you might have to refer to them, you know, maybe a couple of times a year. 
things like maybe tax returns, um, leases, warranties, contracts, maybe medical records. And then the third is a household. And this is documents that keep your, your life and your, uh, your household running. This could be things like, um, let's see, coupons, recipes, user manuals, maybe documents for upcoming travel. And then the third is recycle. And the recycle, of course, has no personal information. This is going to be weekly ads, maybe newspapers. Um, and it doesn't fall into any of the above uh, categories. So there's no personal information on those. Um, what else? Then there is a recycle. And this is um, documents that does not contain any personal information. So every week we get those weekly ads. Um, maybe it's a, you know, a prepaid envelope. So when I get a statement from my dentist or my doctor, they usually will send a um, reply envelope for me to mail back the payments. Well, who's writing checks these days? I'm paying that online. So that can actually go into um, the recycle bin. And then lastly, we've got the shred bin. And the shred bin are going to, I'm sorry, the shred category, the shred is information and documents that have your personal information. Could be utility bills, you know, statements, invoices, um, maybe those pre-approvals for credit card solicitations that has personal information. Sometimes it has a special um, code that you need to activate that pre-approval. So you do want to make sure that you put those into the shred bin. All right. Okay, so the third step in creating your filing system is that you're going to figure out, you know, what filing system do I want to use? Do I want to go, and I'm going to call it old school, but old school is good too. The traditional with a file cabinet with papers. Um, maybe I want to go online storage, digital, or maybe I want to do a combination of both. You know, right now, a lot of businesses are communicating with us electronically through emails, many of our invoices and receipts, they want to send and they do, they send it through email. And so we find ourselves using a lot more technology probably that we ever anticipated that we were going to be using. And so what you might want to do is create a separate email account if you're getting a lot of invoices and statements through email. It will help you to um, not overlook important documents and to help be organized a little bit better. Use a separate email account. So with both of these filing systems, there are advantages and also disadvantages. So we're going to take a look right now first at the advantages for the traditional filing system. And the advantages, of course, is that you've got that tangible, um, easy to access, walk into you know, that room and open that filing drawer and you can put in your document or retrieve a document. And it's easy to, of course, reproduce a document because you've got that document right there at your fingertips. The disadvantage to using the traditional filing system is that your papers could become outdated. <laughs> so when we get our renewals for maybe insurance or um, what else, car information. So you have to kind of go through that and make sure that you take off the old and replace it with the new. And if you're not doing that, that means your information is going to become outdated. And then, of course, there is a lack of backup and security if you're dealing with a paper filing system. It is prone to damage, maybe even misplacing documents. There could be a lack of space and efficiency if you're living in um, tight quarters. You might not have a lot of room for a filing cabinet. With the digital filing system, 
The advantages are, of course, access remotely. <laughs> you can access your documents on multiple devices. So if you're using an online storage and you have internet access, let's suppose that there's an emergency and you need to get a key piece of document to a doctor, or maybe an attorney or family member, you know, very quickly. You can easily go online and pull that up and share that information easily without having to go someplace and make a um, copy and then fax it over and hope they get it. So that's an advantage. And then, so the delivery is quick. You can easily produce, reproduce a copy. The disadvantages with, with the online method is of course, unauthorized user hack. <laughs> so there's that risk that your account, your information could get hacked. And then you also have to make sure that your computer is up to date with the current and most recent um, software protection so that you're protected against viruses. So you wanna make sure that you keep your computer up to date with the latest software to make sure that you don't get a virus on your computer and wipe out all of your information or you lose access to that. And then with the online storage, of course you, uh, there are a lot of companies that provide that service like Dropbox and Evernote, Google Drive and OneDrive, and there's lots of companies. So do your research to make sure that you can find a company that you are comfortable with in that service. So, so far we have gathered all of our documents into one place. We put them into categories, our papers by action, archive, household, recycle and shred. We've established whether we're using a paper filing system, digital or both. And so in this fourth step, we're going to verify the equipment and the tools that you're going to need or that you might need. All right. So let's look at some different types of equipment that you might need. Of course, you more than likely are going to need a file drawer, a filing cabinet. Um, filing folders, and I highly recommend getting multicolor folders. Get folders with different colors so that when you're filing them, it is easy to locate and find documents. Of course, you want to pick a company if you're going to use online digital, pick out a company that you want to work with. You need to have, of course, your computer, um, could be a tablet, maybe your smartphone. You want to use maybe an external hard drive. You can also consider using attractive boxes and binders, and you can use those to help you store your user, use, I'm sorry, user manuals and your equipment. It is a good um, way to hide some of that document, but you want to have it near and you can use those, you know, cute boxes and help hide some of that stuff. It'll cut back on the clutter. And then also you might want to invest in a fireproof safe for your home or a safe deposit box for your permanent and important papers that you want to make sure to, to have access to. And then with a lot of smartphones now, <clears throat> excuse me, with a lot of smartphones, you can now scan documents. So that will enable you to not have to go out and purchase a scanner because you can use your phone. You can use um, a, a label maker to make labels for your files. That way it's, e it's neater, um, you can read it easily. Of course, you want to invest in a really good shredder, one that is a cross cut <laughs> that, high, that offers the highest amount of security. And then lastly, of course, your uh, shred bin. And so to, you know, how we get access, not access, but we get offers for maybe um, pre-approvals on credit cards and insurance solicitation, you can opt out of getting those kinds of solicitation by going to opt out pre-screen. And that's the website on the screen that you can go to that website and it should work where if you don't have an account with a company, they should not be sending you solicitation for their offer. So I've done it and it does work. Opt out pre-screen. It'll help get rid of um, solicitation. And so the fifth step in your filing 
um, organizing your filing system that you're going to select your filing method. <laughs> How do you want to file your, your documents? So some of the most common is by subject and category, alphabetical, and then lastly, dates and maybe chronological order. So think about how do you want your documents organized? You have to do this because if you don't, your filing system is gonna be a mess. So make sure that you figure out how you wanna file your documents. That's the fifth step. And so these, this, these bullets that you're seeing now, um, are some examples of some of the major categories that you probably have in your filing system. You might have a filing system for your house, for your financial statements, for your vehicles, your insurance, medical, dental, tax returns, owners, manuals, warranties, vital records, education, employment, and the list could go on depending on your filing needs. In our second part of organizing your financial records in part two, which I'm going to do a webinar on part two, we're going to do a deeper dive into some of these categories and see how we can be more efficient and um, going through some processes to help you stay on top of your filing system. So it's a deeper dive. So your goal with creating your home filing system that you're going to have an effective, you're going to have a useful system, you're going to have a system that is functional. What you do not want is a filing um, a system, if you're going to use paper where it is jam packed full of stuff and it's hard to get in there and dig through, you want to make it where it's easy to find documents and then leaving room so that you can go in and take stuff out and add new documents. So remember when you are creating your filing system, but this is something that you're doing for your for your um, your lifetime. You're not creating this for just the next six months. You're creating this as a lifetime filing system. And then if you're going to use digital, of course, make sure that you have the latest virus protection and software um, updates to your computer because you want to make sure that um, you're protected and don't be afraid to switch it up. So if you find that your system isn't working, you want it to go all digital and you're like, this isn't working, then switch it up. Find something that you are comfortable with and that works for you and then work on maintaining that. All right, so the, the recap of what we've talked about in creating your home filing system is the first step is gather all of your documents into one place. Second step is to put your papers in categories that we talked about. Third, decide on your filing system. Digital, <laughs> traditional, or both, and it's fine but pick out your filing system, then verify what equipment and tools that you're gonna need. It might have to buy some stuff, might have to make a little bit of an investment, but it's gonna be worth it. And then the last thing that you're gonna do is to choose your filing guide. Alphabetical, or by subject, category, or you're gonna do date chronological order. And so think of your filing system as a creative task, <laughs> a creative task. It's going to make it so much more fun and enjoyable if you create it, think about it as a creative task. And remember that you are investing in your lifetime of being organized so that you'll never have to pay a late fee again because you forgot that a bill was due. And then you can lastly locate that and important piece of paper if you should have an emergency and you needed to get an access to an important piece of paper and, and send it to someone quickly. Think about it. So there are benefits to getting organized. So thank you so much for watching this webinar. And it is our hope that the information um, is valuable and good luck in setting up your filing system. Thank you so much.